What's up, Liron here, and today I'm taking you with me to paint outside. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video coming at you with my fisheye lens. Um, and today, because I've been asked a lot, uh, I'm gonna take you with me to paint outside. So first off, let me show you the tools I need and what I take every single time I paint outside. So here are some of the essential stuff that I have to take with me every time. Here, I've got my brushes and I don't believe I ever showed you. So let me open this thing up and you'll see, here we go. My brushes, I'm gonna need to restock them uh, with my favorite ones, the ones I take with me because usually I keep them uh, inside. Then I've got this uh, little metallic palette uh, that I like dearly and I have this click and go cup by Faber Castle, really important. Here we go, I clicked it and now we can go. Um, I added these wires so that I can put it on my easel. Uh, so uh, hopefully you can see how that becomes useful. Let's click it back and go. And of course the tape is something that's really, really important because I have to tape it to this board that I'm taking with me as well. Next up we have the paper itself. Saunders Waterford is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna cut it in half and use one of these probably. By the way, here's yesterday's painting that, uh, it wasn't yesterday really, uh, but by the time this video is out, at the time of recording, this was from yesterday. So these are some of the main things I'm gonna get. Now I'm gonna take some of my favorite brushes and put them back into uh, the, the brush case. So now I've got uh, the paper ready, as you've seen. One more important thing I must have with me is this tripod so that I can actually film the process and show you what I'm doing. Um, another important thing is this little bag right over here uh, in which I put these kinds of uh, wooden plank to hold the paper itself. Uh, and with that being said, we're almost wrapped up. I'm gonna grab everything, put everything together and talk about the last few things I need to add. Okay, so I have everything here uh, in my bag, most of the things I showed you. Now, a few important things. I always make sure to have toilet paper. No, I'm just kidding. I always make sure to have this kind of paper uh, so that I can clean my brush. Water is really important. If you wanna paint with watercolor, you tend to need it. And finally, I always make sure that I have some kind of a pencil, of course. I actually have a couple of other pencils here, always as backup. And worst case, I just don't use one. Uh, now, here's another important thing. These clips are really, really useful to holding things onto the board. Uh, if it's windy or stuff like that, this is really, really important. Ooh, and one last really important thing is my uh, easel. That's by US Art Supply. And as we open it up outside, I'm gonna show you more of it and why I absolutely love this one. And I think now we have everything we need. So now I'm gonna get my shoes on and we'll get started. So here we are in Tel Aviv. I hope the camera isn't too shaky, but I know it is a bit. Uh, I'm gonna show you a bit of uh, the places around and the sunlight is really nice right now. So let me show you. So as you can see, you don't need to look really hard to find some very interesting sunlight coming from there. Uh, the sun comes from there right now and it gives off this uh, nice hazy feeling. You can see all the shadows are cast to the right, which is really interesting. Uh, the one thing you need to make sure you do uh, is you're being careful where you start to paint because if the sun comes over you, it's gonna kind of kill you. Uh, let me show you where I'm going. So we're now gonna go into this uh, small street called Barilan. It's a really, um, not that interesting, but if you go straight ahead there, uh, you're gonna see that there are some really, really cool and interesting buildings. Uh, and I know a lot of you have been wanting me to do this kind of video for a while now. So you're gonna help me find a uh, reference to paint. We're gonna deal with the shakiness. 
if it bothers you actually you might as well quit right now or skip to the painting part because it's gonna be like that for most of the video sorry about that um, so let's talk a bit about finding good reference so I'm looking for large shapes of shadow and light that's the best uh, indication of something good uh, to paint um, I'm also looking for a lot of variety in the values so not just very dark scenes not just very light scenes something uh, in the middle uh, we're gonna make a few turns now and you're, you'll see some really good spots to paint and also with strong sunlight that the light kind of uh, pours through the streets uh, into this area. <laughs> By the way, that's a nice little view over there. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of kind of haze uh, as you move into the street. I like that kind of thing. So check this building out, on occasion you'll find some very uh, interesting kind of old, new uh, styled buildings uh, like this one, uh, nice combination of wood and you know just brown and white. Uh, I don't get to paint these kinds of buildings a lot, but I should <laughs> definitely do more of that. Uh, but in any case, we're almost, almost there, here we go. Uh, here's another really nice scene, this street corner, uh, we're now in a street called Schenkin. Uh, and this building with the awning and everything is really interesting. Um, we also have some buildings being renovated on the left, so hopefully you can still hear me, hear me with all those trucks and stuff like that. Uh, but a very interesting and beautiful, beautiful street to paint, uh, I think. So there's something really interesting I wanted to show you. You can see it right here, there's a juice place and I actually like the way uh, the light shines on it, so I may go for that. Uh, it will be smaller scale and uh, a simpler painting, so maybe we'll try that, and if that doesn't work out, maybe we'll find a bigger building or a larger seat. And just to give you a better view of it, check it out, it's really nice with all the uh, orange and stuff like that. will uh, give us a, an opportunity, I think, to do a nice underpainting and maybe capture some of the people under there uh, in the shadow. Let's go for that. So I promised I'd show you uh, the most important part of this, uh, which is this uh, easel by US Art Supply. I think you're gonna really uh, like this one. Let me open it up and I'm gonna show you some of its components and why this is definitely the best. Link in the description box below, by the way. This is definitely the best easel I ever used uh, so far. Okay, so let me show you why I think this is the best and see this creepy doll over here. I was sure that's a real person looking at me, but anyway, I was really scared for a moment. Jump scared me. Uh, so anyway, here's the easel. Now, it looks really simple, but let me show it to you up close. Okay, so the main advantage of this one, and I haven't seen a lot of easels do that, is just the fact that you can change the angle. Okay, this is really important for watercolor. Um, there is another part that pops in from the top and locks the paper from uh, top and bottom, but I just leave it uh, at home. I don't really need it. Now, everything here is adjustable. Uh, you can change the, of course, the angle here. You can change where this is if I just unscrew this, but I have to do it one-handed, so I hope I don't mess anything up, but you can, you see, move it up and down. Um, you can, of course, play around with the height. Uh, you can also move these parts around. So if you need to put in something, a plate or something on top of that to put in all your tools, then you can do uh, that as well. Here's my foam tripod, by the way. It's a really good one. So if you want to grab that as well from somewhere, I don't know if you can find it. I don't know where. Uh, but it's a really good one. And one important note I did want to say, um, there are of course easels that can do that, but everything I found personally, uh, whether it's on Amazon or uh, in anywhere else, was super expensive. This was like 70 bucks, I think. Everything I found was really, really expensive and it was wooden, it was very heavy and very cumbersome. This uh, is perfect, really. Now, uh, a really nice little uh, hack here is that there's gonna be people here all the time. There's gonna be uh, people, uh, you know, coming and going and so uh, this will allow us to practice painting maybe uh, multiple figures, multiple types of, you know, uh, colors of clothes and stuff like that in all in one. So you can just stay here and stock the scene uh, and get a lot of variety in one go. So that's a nice little nifty trick for you.
Okay, so now I got everything I need for the drawing stage, okay? When we start painting, I'm gonna do some things uh, differently, but uh, I taped the paper to the board. Uh, as you can see, I can play around with the angle fairly easily later on if I need to uh, control how the water uh, pours down the paper. Um, I have these clips that are ultra important, okay? These are really useful for a bunch of things, especially if it's windy and everything's flying all around the place. I'm gonna use them to strengthen my uh, uh, paper towels as well. Uh, but for now, we don't need any of that. All I need is my pencil and we'll get uh, started with drawing the scene. Now, one of the tricky things about it is I do need to uh, start figuring out the composition. This car just uh, stopped by here. So I'll have to figure out what uh, kind of role the awning plays here and where I'm gonna place it, whether it's to the left or to the right. Uh, but what I do know for sure is that I wanna convey that strong, strong orangey sunlight. So we're gonna have an interesting underpainting here. Um, I really like the left side as well as the right side. Uh, so I'm not really sure. It does open up to that direction. So that makes me want to put it a bit to the left of the painting and not to the right, which will feel a little detached from the left area. So I'm probably going to place it uh, like that. I just need to figure out what I'm going to do with all the uh, cars and bicycle and all of those uh, stuff, but we can figure it out. So as you can see, there are tons of, by the way, this thing is keep, keeps photo bombing me. Uh, but as you can see, there are a lot of decisions to make and you may not make the right one, which is fine. You just have to experiment. What I'm gonna do is uh, take out my sketchbook and try a few compositions, see what works for me. So after a couple of experiments, I have a composition I feel confident about. Um, I don't feel confident about the entire scene as a painting, but I do feel comfortable uh, about the, the composition. So I decided I'm gonna uh, leave it uh, landscape oriented. I'm gonna put here the, uh, the awning and the juice place. Uh, and then we're gonna have the building a little to the right to keep this space open maybe for a line of people that may happen here. I do wanna include this little bench here because I can place some figures on it and then uh, really contrast them with this area that's in the shadow. So we're just gonna go for it. I actually like the way the guy working there uh, is uh, dressed with this uh, overall, so, or, uh, or an apron, whatever that is. Uh, so I'm gonna try and go for that uh, and hopefully uh, we'll get it to work. Okay, so let me show you what I got so far. I'm pretty pleased with the drawing, even though it may be a little too loose for this kind of thing. Now, I did play around a bit with the perspective, made it much more exaggerated, uh, mainly for me to have kind of an anchor to lean on. So I have this vanishing point around here where I decided to place the horizon line uh, and everything is coming out of that. There's another very subtle vanishing point to the left, but I didn't include that. Uh, now, I'm just afraid I'm gonna run out of battery or space on my phone so I'm gonna be brief but mainly my big fear is that I left this area a little too open so what happens is there's nothing here really so is there justification for that I don't know uh, we'll see how we pull that off together okay so I set up everything I need to paint so let me show you first remember those wires I uh, added to this so now I can hang it up here uh, nicely the palette will be in my hand and I've got my brush I'm gonna start with this uh, refile brush uh, because it's really good for covering large spaces but also being a little more accurate so let's talk plan uh, we have a lot of very vibrant and happy colors here that I want to be able to portray on paper so we're gonna do this kind of an underpainting of lots of uh, orange yellow greens a bit here because there is a bit of green um, for all of the all of the walls and everything uh, a bit for the sky here just a sliver of sky over here uh, and hopefully that'll uh, set us up for success later on because then we'll have to start adding in the mid values and all of that but I want to start with a very happy vibrant first wash.
Okay, so I wanted to give you a better look at this. Uh, first wash is done. I'm very happy with how it turned out. There was this lady here that wore a uh, red uh, sweater and red shoes. This was really striking, so I decided to put that in with a bit of a red stain here. A lot of orange around the awning. Uh, I may get a bit of backgrounds, but that's fine. I felt completely free with this first wash. There was actually, actually a, a nice line forming up here, and you can see, for example, this guy there. He's in the light and all of the background is in shadow, uh, which is exactly the effect we're aiming for. So the, the real magic here is gonna um, happen when we add the mid values the, and, and not even the darkest shadows, but just the mid values. I'm gonna try and, and capture that kind of thing that kind of form and we'll see how that goes but I'm gonna have to let it dry for a few moments now I don't have direct sunlight unfortunately I may even cross the street just to get it uh, and we'll keep you updated okay so this is pretty much dry and now uh, we can talk about the plan for the second uh, wash this is gonna be the main one the thing that will uh, kind of define our shapes in the best way so we're gonna have a massive shadow around here coming all around the awning and I'm gonna have to drop it down from here probably all the way to this building uh, paint around the figures all the way down to this stopping point of the shadow at the back uh, connect it to this area that's gonna be also pretty well shaded not forget the cast shadows by this uh, different structures here uh, and also uh, I, I need to figure out if I need to add any other shadows around here but I think that's gonna be mainly it um, another main shadow under these these awnings here uh, and hopefully we'll get a nice little uh, feeling of depth or uh, some kind of an interest here uh, and then we can bring out some more details using the the very darkest shadows Okay friends, so now is a critical moment in the painting process. I basically have most of the main shapes in and now I just have to figure out um, how I want to proceed, whether I want to make some changes. So let me turn the camera and I'm going to show you what I mean. So now we have the uh, lightest values, we have the mid values. Now the question is how dark we want to go uh, with the dark shadows that are going to play an important role, sure enough. Uh, in making some of these people pop more, making the awning pop more. This side is pretty much done. Uh, it's, that's actually it makes me really happy. We don't need to do anything with this building. Nothing is done. Now the question is, uh, how many darks do we add here? How many maybe shadows on the oranges themselves? I think this needs to be significantly darker. Uh, maybe also going over some of the details on the side of the building here probably dry brush and trying to figure out what to do with them um, maybe darkening some of the shadows on the floor we have a lot of uh, um, a lot of decision making uh, in regard to how dark we want our darkest values to be okay that's the main question okay so after giving it some thought I know exactly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add dry brush to this uh, the walls of this this building now what's really important is demonstrating where this building meets the ground this is what I was missing here so as soon as I'm gonna put in this kind of a, a line going here uh, the perspective is gonna become much clearer uh, I'm gonna add a shadow under the awning here but it's very important that I negative paint around the the, uh, the juice guy okay because he's under the awning as well uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, make this entire area darker as I mentioned some directional lines maybe maybe 
maybe some dry brush here, uh, some cables running or wires running, and finally dry brush uh, details of the windows and stuff like that on that building. And we're pretty much uh, done with this one. Uh, very pleased with the result so far. Okay, so this is why it's important to talk about decision making. Um, after looking at this, I don't think I can get away without darkening this shadow because uh, the people here should be much lighter compared to that. And also the awning should be a little lighter. So what I think I'll do, and I'm gonna show you how I do it and hopefully it'll work. I'm gonna do a very thin glaze all over this wall careful around uh, the awning and stop at the people okay and hopefully that'll uh, end up working out I don't know if it doesn't it doesn't uh, but that's uh, life and delight everything changed like I have to show you I can no longer rely on what I saw initially in the scene because everything changed uh, all of the light here uh, now there's no sun sunlight at all it actually got a little cold um, so I have to kind of work by memory uh, which is why uh, this is so uh, challenging so in any case, I'm gonna keep going, do a very thin glaze. So you got a weird hiccup. Uh, we'll do a very thin glaze over this wall and hopefully it ends up working out. Okay, so I think I got lucky and that ended up working out, but you really are taking a risk every time you do uh, that kind of thing. You have to understand it. As long as you understand it, you can do it. Um, now, this may dictate that I also darken this side up a little. I'm gonna do some final touches and hopefully uh, wrap it up soon. I don't wanna uh, mess around with it too much. I think I'll also darken the people, some of them at least, uh, but I don't wanna overdo it. And even if it's partially completed, uh, once I have the reference photo and I take this inside, I can create a better version uh, inside the studio, okay? So uh, final touches and I think we'll wrap it up. Okay, so now the sun is back uh, to some extent and I remembered what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to put a very, uh, first off, dark in the, the actual uh, street, the <coughs> uh, asphalt, and then I wanted to add a very gentle shadow onto the uh, sidewalk itself because uh, it, it's gonna connect it nicely together and it was there. Uh, and now by the time I talked, the sun is gone again, uh, but I'm gonna do that final touch and I think we're gonna wrap it up. Okay, friends, I think I'm done here. Uh, you saw the entire process, the reference, uh, me, and you saw me struggle and try different things and, and make a few um, guesses. Some of them may worked out better than others, some haven't. Again, a lot of decision-making um, in, in almost every painting process. Sometimes you get things right, sometimes, sometimes you don't, but especially if you're working outside, I wouldn't get uh, too caught up on not getting everything perfectly uh, the same as, as what you're looking at because part of the magic is first you interpreting and changing uh, some stuff around and the second is once you take this inside you can do a lot of things with it, uh, uh, different <coughs> versions, uh, better versions, um, try and get the accuracy right but still preserve that realistic fresh impression you had when you were at the scene that's really really important. So uh, with that being said I think we'll wrap it up. I'm gonna give you one last look at the painting and then uh, we'll do the final conclusion. Um, so here it is in its final stage. I'm gonna sign this in just a moment. That's not urgent right now uh, but I'm very happy with how it turned out. Again a lot of things to work on, a lot of things to improve as always. Um, it's all in the plan. It's all in how you plan it out how you uh, structure it to look good, um, how you decide in advance what the major shapes are. Uh, and I think I did a decent job here, could have done again a lot better, uh, but uh, I do have some magical areas that I really like, like this area here works really well. I like the way these bags of um, 
oranges look. Uh, I like that person over here, the person at the front of the line. I like a lot of uh, individual parts of this. Uh, and so usually with every painting, you will find uh, an area or two or three if you're lucky that you really like. And if you're really skilled and lucky, you will like the whole thing. Uh, so now let's wrap it up. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I want to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe. Let me know in a comment below if you want to see more of these kinds of things. I know uh, a lot of people have been asking for a long time now uh, for me for me to show uh, the city and be outside and I'll show you different buildings and cars and how I uh, approach these kinds of very different settings from uh, what you're used to. So I hope that gives you some of that. Um, these are the hardest in some way to produce because there are a lot of variables in it like the weather and whether I find a good scene or not and the result you never know what's gonna happen uh, but I'm just enjoying sharing it with you as it is not changing anything too much and hopefully you'll find it enjoyable so again I want to thank you and I will see you again in another vid real soon